Welcome back to the Luke Diamond Show. I am your host, Luke Diamond. This is episode three as one of the great quarterbacks, not only of this generation, but of all time. And one of the great athletes of all time officially announced his retirement from the National Football League after 20 years in New England, two years in Tampa Bay, and seven Super Bowl championships. Tom Brady has officially announced his retirement. Now, on Saturday night, I think he had already made up his mind. I think the decision was set. Schefter breaks it, but Brady, in my opinion, did not want to release this information the day before the eve of the AFC and NFC championships. Brady played in nine consecutive AFC championships, then they get knocked out in the first round, his final 10 years in New England. Last year, obviously, goes back to the Super Bowl, wins the Super Bowl with Tampa, and then this year is not playing. So I think this was only his second time in about 12 or 13 years not playing on championship weekend. And I really believe Brady did not want to make the AFC or NFC championship broadcasts about himself. And I respect the hell out of that. Not wanting to be the center of attention for a young Joe Burrow, Pat Mahomes, who's playing in his fourth AFC championship game in four years. Matt Stafford, who finally won his first career playoff game last weekend, going to an NFC championship, now winning an NFC championship. And of course, Jimmy G, who was sitting behind Brady for a couple years there in New England. So I really thought that Brady did not want that leaked. It was a little bit different than the Andrew Luck situation, but it was essentially the same thing from Schefter's point of view, breaking an announcement the player doesn't want to be broken yet. And that's just, I guess, part of the business you could say. I don't like it. I think you're kind of being an a-hole. I think you're abusing your power. And I just don't think it's the right humane thing. I mean, you're Adam Schefter. You break so many stories. You break hundreds of stories, if not a thousand stories a year. You really can't let Tom Brady, one of the greats, one of the all-time greats, have his moment to release his own statement following his decision to retire from the National Football League. So I lose a little bit of respect there for Adam Schefter. I lost respect when he did it to Luck. In 2019, I didn't like that he broke that during halftime of a preseason game with Andrew Luck on the sideline and a bunch of drunk fans who booed him off the field. Let him retire on his own time. I lose respect there for Adam Schefter. I get it's his job. I get if he doesn't do it, Rap or one of these other guys will break it. It'll be broken probably before Brady would like it to be broken. But that's just the way these things work. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of it. Unfortunately, that's the way. These things are now with the power of social media and the smartphone and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Information is at a fingertip and guys are able to relay that information quick. And if it's not you, it's somebody else. And Adam Schefter is the best in the business and he makes the big bucks for a reason. So I'm not a huge fan of him doing this or him as really a person the last couple of years since the Andrew Luck retirement. But Here we are on Tuesday, yesterday on Monday, he basically said, I'm still weighing my options, it's day to day, I don't know yet. I think he's known since Saturday, maybe before that, before Schefter found out. But here we are on Tuesday, he officially announces his retirement. I thought the nine page post he put up on both Twitter and on Instagram were very interesting. I know he did thank Belichick and Kraft and the Patriot fans when he left New England in free agency a couple years ago. But in this retirement post where he is retiring from his 22-year NFL career, his seven championships, his three MVPs, 20 seasons spent in New England, doesn't mention Robert Kraft, doesn't mention Bill Belichick, doesn't mention New England, doesn't mention Foxborough, Boston, Massachusetts, the Patriot fans. I thought that was very odd how he went that entire nine-page announcement without mentioning anything to do with his 20 years spent in New England, two full decades with the Pats. So I thought that was interesting that he doesn't mention anything to do with New England in this very long, it wasn't a one paragraph quick thank you to Tampa for the last two years. This was almost like a career retrospective post that was nine pages long where he completely ignores the first 20 years of his career. So I thought that was interesting. But just a quick thought on Tom Brady before I get to the main point of this show. As a Colt fan who had countless battles with Tom Brady, both in the regular season and the postseason, I want to say thank you to being able to watch this guy and the greatness over the course of 22 years. Of course, I was rooting against him. I was not a fan of Tom Brady. Hated the New England Patriots. It was a little bit easier for me to tolerate the winning when he went to Tampa Bay last year. 
out of the seven Super Bowls. Last year was the only one where I was able to sleep at night and I wasn't pissed off that Tom Brady was hoisting yet another Lombardi championship trophy. It was a little bit different being with Robert Kraft and Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick and all the clowns up there in New England. So as far as Brady ending this, the last two years in Tampa is a little bit easier for me to tolerate. There was some New England flair there with Gronk, but it was much different than wearing that Patriot uniform up in Foxborough with the Pats. So congratulations to Brady. As a Cole fan, I want to thank him. Honestly, thank him for so many great battles, AFC championships. Of course, the Colts coming back from down 18 in 2006, 21-3. Kind of like the Bengal Chief game this weekend, 21-3, coming all the way back. The RCA Dome was rocking, one of the great moments of my life. The best Colt game I've ever watched, the best win we ever experienced as Colt fans in my lifetime at least was that 2006-2007 AFC Championship game going to the Super Bowl, beating the Bears. But as great as that Super Bowl was, it'll never be better than beating Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. Trailing by 18 points, crazy comeback, shootout at the end, Marlon Jackson picking off Tom Brady. Marlon's got it, we're going to the Super Bowl. So I want to say thank you to Tom Brady for an incredible career. Just the accolades, the touchdown record, the seven Super Bowls, the three MVPs, the All-Pros, the Pro Bowls, the longevity, the fact that he's still producing at a high level. If he wanted to come back next year for year 23, he'd still be playing at a high level. I understand that maybe he can't give it 100% and he doesn't want to play at 95% and 90%. So I respect that. He's walking away. He's walking away, honestly, at the top of his game. They make this crazy comeback. Two weeks ago against the Rams, but he's calling it a career, an incredible career. As far as team success and winning, the greatest career of all time in the NFL, the greatest quarterback career. Do you want to call him the GOAT? Well, I think that's a tough title to just give out because what are you talking about? Pure talent? Tom Brady does not have the pure talent of Patrick Mahomes. He didn't have the pure talent of Aaron Rodgers. Even some of these young guys like Josh Allen, there's just certain guys that have physical traits. They don't have the career accolades. They don't have the longevity. They haven't done it nearly as long as Tom Brady has. But he can't run the way some of these guys can run. He doesn't have the arm strength of Josh Allen or Justin Herbert or some of these young guys in the league. I don't think he had the football IQ, maybe the ability to dissect the defense the same way Payton could. Now, he's extremely intelligent. That system they ran in New England that he brought to Tampa Bay, being able to get the ball off quick, incredible. But when you look at the full package, it's about winning. It's about winning. He was always on the right team, even going to Tampa. He was on the right team, had the right coach in Bill Belichick, always had the right playmakers, had a great defense all those years, great kicker, Venetary making some huge kicks. Of course, Tom Brady also caught his fair share of lucky breaks, the tuck rule, D4 jumping offside. So he got lucky plenty of times, but then he cashed in. When he got that second opportunity, he was going to cash in. A lot of guys get the second opportunity. Patrick Mahomes just won the coin flip back-to-back -back weeks, scored the first week, couldn't score the second week, had an 18-point lead in the second half, wasn't able to score a touchdown in the second half. So... Tom Brady, yes, he's had his fair share of lucky breaks. Yes, he's always been on great teams. But to me, it's tough to weigh. If we're just talking about pure winners, obviously Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. But I want to take it one step further because I've seen ESPN and some of these outlets talk about the greatest athlete of all time. And I don't know how you measure that. Like greatest quarterback of all time, okay, they're all playing the same position. It's the same set of skills. Now, yes, Lamar is going to play a different way that Brady's going to play. And Mahomes is going to play a different way. And Allen's going to play a different way. And Rodgers is going to play a different way. So, yes, there's different styles. There's different ways to play the position. But at the end of the day, you're still playing the same sport and you're still playing the same position. To say greatest football player of all time is tough for me because Tom Brady cannot do what Lawrence Taylor could have done and Lawrence Taylor could not do what Tom Brady could do. Same thing with Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice could not do what Tom Brady could do. But Tom Brady definitely couldn't do what Jerry Rice could do. Jerry Rice would have a better chance at winning a football game as a Wildcat quarterback handing the ball off and just dumping the ball off and running around than Tom Brady ever could making game-winning plays at the receiver position unless you were doing end-arounds where he was throwing the ball downfield. So as far as who the greatest football player of all time is, that's a tough one for me too.
Even quarterback, to an extent, is tough. But the guy did play the position, the same position every other quarterback's played, and he's won seven championships. No team in NFL history has won more than six. Brady has seven. And the Patriots obviously wouldn't have six if it wasn't for Tom Brady. But I see a lot of people talking about the greatest athlete of all time. The greatest athlete. How do I compare Tom Brady to Hussein Bolt? How do I compare him to Michael Phelps? How do I compare him to Tiger Woods? How do I compare him to LeBron James? I can't even compare him to Jerry Rice or to Lawrence Taylor. You look at Tom Brady and LeBron James. How do you compare the two? If I took LeBron James and I put him on a football field, to be honest, wouldn't LeBron James be better at 21 of 22 positions? Who are you taking at defensive end? Six foot eight, 250 pound LeBron James, who's just a freak of nature athlete, or Tom Brady? Who are you taking at safety? Who are you taking at strong safety? Who are you taking at cornerback? Who are you taking at tight end, wide receiver, defensive end? You're going to take the six foot eight. LeBron James with a 45-inch vertical that could run up and down the basketball court and just do anything. He could catch anything. Remember when Tom Brady had that pass thrown to him a couple years ago and he looked like an absolute dork? We've all seen Tom Brady's combine pictures. Now, the guy stays in incredible shape. The guy is in perfect shape to do what he was asked to do at the quarterback position for the last 22 years and playing deep into his 40s, just incredible. I think he's thrown more touchdown passes in his 40s than he threw in his 20s, which is an insane statistic. But in terms of agility and speed and size and strength, but then again, Tom Brady's probably a better pitcher. He might swing a better bat. He might have a better golf swing than LeBron James. So how do you measure greatest athlete? Because if we put Tom Brady on a basketball court, and matched him up with LeBron James, it's 100 nothing every single time. LeBron's scoring every time he gets the ball. Brady's never going to stop him. Unless you leave Brady open for three, like wide open, maybe he'll knock a couple down. But if LeBron's on him like a glove, Brady's never getting the ball on the floor. He's never putting the ball on the floor. He's never going to be able to dribble. He'll never get a shot off. LeBron's closeout speed, I mean, forget about it. You have a much better chance of putting LeBron at quarterback and letting him run around and make plays. LeBron will make more plays on a football field at Brady's position, where Brady is arguably the greatest of all time, than Brady would make on a basketball floor trying to be or play against LeBron James. And that also gets into, on a football field, you only play on one side of the ball. Brady's never asked. In games where Tom Brady's won 9-6, kicking three field goals, well, who's playing defense? Brady's not making stops on the other side. So you do need that give and take. When in basketball or in other sports, you're kind of playing both. A great pitcher, you could give up one run a game. If your offense never scores, like Jacob deGrom has had years where he was under 500, but he was clearly the best pitcher in terms of ERA and other statistics, clearly the best pitcher in Major League Baseball. But if you're pitching one-run games, and your offense literally could never score and you're losing one nothing, or you're losing 2-1 or the bullpen's coming in and blowing it, you're not going to have the win-loss record to show for it. So this greatest athlete of all time discussion is very difficult for me because how are we measuring this? Tyreek Hill is an incredible receiver. He's a speed demon on the field. But if you put him up against Hussein Bolt or against the field when you're talking about the Olympics and the 100-meter, 200-meter, he might look like one of the slowest guys out there because it's a different sport. So how do you take those athletes? And then I've seen Hussein Bolt try to play basketball. Doesn't have the greatest hands in the world. He'd be the fastest receiver in the NFL of all time. Fastest 40, but could he catch the ball? So it's very difficult for me. Michael Phelps, hands down the greatest swimmer in terms of Olympic medals, the greatest Olympian of all time. But how do you compare him to the other Olympic events? How does he play basketball? How does he run track? How does he throw the javelin? How does he throw the shot put? Like you can't compare the two. But in terms of his events, the butterfly, the backstroke, the breaststroke, all the stuff he's done, the relay races, he's by far, hands down, the greatest swimmer. And in terms of medals, because there are so many events he could compete in, the greatest Olympian of all time. So what if you throw Tom Brady in the pool? He'll get absolutely dusted, dusted by Michael Phelps. He'll be swimming 10 minutes after Phelps finishes a two-minute race. 
because it's just a completely different sport. So to me, this is more of a shock jock reaction to talk about who the greatest athlete of all time is. We're looking at a seven-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. Incredible. Talk about that. I don't understand comparing to see it all over ESPN this weekend and especially now that the announcement is official. All over Twitter, the greatest athlete of all time. What about the two-sport athletes? What about Bo Jackson? What about Deion Sanders? What about guys? Deion Sanders hit a home run and scored a touchdown professionally, hit a home run for the Braves, scored a touchdown for the Falcons in the same week. And that guy, you're talking about a Hall of Famer in one of his two sports. Then you have a guy like Bo Jackson, who maybe could have been a Hall of Famer if he stuck to one. And yes, I understand he was an all-star in the MLB, which is very impressive. But he's not a Hall of Famer in the NFL. He's not a Hall of Famer in the MLB. It's incredible that he played both. He was able to play both at the professional level. But I still look, in terms of just pure athlete, LeBron James easily, in my opinion, easily could have been an all-pro caliber tight end. How are you stopping him? Look at all these former basketball players that make the move, that are tweeners, undersized basketball players that make the move to football and have pretty good careers in the NFL as tight ends. There's no doubt in my mind, as long as he stayed healthy, that LeBron James could have been an all-time great tight end. And he's arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, at least one of the greatest basketball players of all time, about to be the all-time leading scorer in both the regular season and the postseason. He's going to hit the 40,000-point, 10,000-rebound, 10,000-assist club, the guy has four championships. He's incredible. He's been able to do pretty much anything you've asked him to do on the basketball court now for going on 18 years. You look at Tom Brady and what he's been able to do on the football field at his one position, it's incredible. But LeBron could play all five positions in his sport. Brady could play zero positions in the NBA. If you put LeBron in the NFL, he would be a better receiver than Tom Brady. He'd be a better safety than Tom Brady. He'd be a better offensive lineman than Tom Brady. He'd be a better running back than Tom Brady. He'd be a better tight end than Tom Brady. He'd be a better safety. He'd be a better linebacker. He'd be a better D lineman. He'd be better at everything than Tom Brady. There's nothing besides the one position that Brady's played where Brady would be better than LeBron James on a football field, which is Tom Brady's sport and the sport he's considered the greatest player at of all time. That conversation's impossible for me because again, Tom Brady could not play receiver better than anybody in the NFL, let alone guys like Jerry Rice and Randy Moss and Marvin Harrison, the all-time greats, or Lawrence Taylor. If you put him on defense, could you imagine Tom Brady on defense at any position on defense? Could you imagine him at defensive end? Back in the day when we played NFL Street, the reason you didn't draft Tom Brady or Peyton Manning was because in those seven-on-seven -seven games, everybody played both sides of the ball. So you were better off taking a guy like Randall L, who played quarterback in college, to be your quarterback because he could throw a little bit. He could run around. You could make plays with his feet. And then defensively, you could throw him at safety or you could hide him on defense because he's still fast and he's still an athlete. But you couldn't really hide Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. They would become liabilities defensively in NFL Street. And it's the same thing in real football. What are they going to do? What will Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Phillip Rivers, Eli Manning, what will they do on a football field besides be a quarterback? Meanwhile, you could take LeBron James, who's never played a down in the NFL, although he was one of the great high school players. I think he was the number one football player in Ohio the year of his high school graduation. Of course, going straight to the NBA to play basketball, but he could have went to Ohio State. He could have went anywhere and played football at the next level in college and definitely made it to the NFL and been a tight end or been a receiver in the National Football League. But you put him on the NFL field. Right now, of course, at 36, 37 years old, he's not going to do that. But you did that in his 20s, early 30s. There's no doubt in my mind. In that lockout year, if he wanted to go when the NBA was holding out, if he wanted to go and play football in the NFL, there's no doubt in my mind he would have been able to do it and been successful at it. You can't put Tom Brady in the NBA and expect any level of productivity. So the entire conversation is really, really stupid. Compare guys to the guys they've gone against in their era, in their sport, at their position, especially when you're talking about football. We've seen... We've seen Magic Johnson start games at center in the NBA. 
What position is Tom Brady going to start? We hear it all the time. He's the greatest quarterback. He's the greatest football player of all time. Okay, he's the greatest football player of all time. You're going to start him at receiver and win a championship? Of course not. In terms of quarterbacks, one of the greatest I've ever seen. In terms of being a winner at the quarterback position, the greatest I've ever seen. Seven championships. Seven Super Bowl championships. He entered the league around what? Super Bowl 32, 33, Super Bowl 35, somewhere in the 30s. So there were 30-plus Super Bowls, probably 35, 36 Super Bowls before Tom Brady entered the league. No team, no team, no franchise has won more Super Bowls than Tom Brady's won alone, including the New England Patriots, because the Patriots had a big fat goose egg before he got there. And they have six to Tom Brady seven because he leaves New England and he goes in his first year and wins a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay, which is incredible. And as far as the Brady versus Belichick, Brady needed this Super Bowl because Belichick could coach for another 10, 15 years. So if you wanted to win the breakup, you had to win in one of these two years because your window was very small. And Brady went out and he did it right away. Belichick will coach another 10 years if he has to, to tie Brady at seven. But Brady's retiring now, two years without Belichick. It only took one year, one year without Belichick, but two years now total without Belichick, and he won a championship. Belichick's now 0 for 2 without Tom Brady. Let's see how far and how long it takes him to win that championship, if it ever happens, because I think right now he's holding out until he could get number seven and give the Patriots number seven while Tom Brady is enjoying retirement with seven in the bag. So congratulations to Tom Brady. It's not a knock to say you can't call him, in my opinion, you can't call him the greatest athlete of all time. Not a knock because that is an impossible, an impossible discussion to have. I might call LeBron James the greatest athlete as far as football, basketball. I'd say it's probably LeBron James. But could LeBron James swing a golf club? Could LeBron James swing a baseball bat? Can LeBron James pitch? Can LeBron James beat Phelps in a swimming match? Can LeBron James wrestle? Like, there's so many sports. He might be the greatest pure athlete from a size, speed, coordination, agility, vertical leap, and all that standpoint. But fundamentally, his basketball fundamentals are off the chart. Can he swing a bat? If you gave him 100 at-bats in the MLB, would he get a hit? I don't know. I don't know. As far as basketball speaks for itself, as far as football, I'm pretty sure just looking at his physique and comparing it to other guys who weren't a tenth of the basketball player, maybe a 20th or a 30th of the basketball player that LeBron James is, being able to make that transition, I'm pretty sure LeBron could make that transition as well. Plus, you look at his tape from high school and that flag football league when the NBA guys were playing flag football during their lockout, the six foot eight, 250, 260, if you wanted to bulk up a little bit more for the NFL, just monster running up and down the football field. There's no doubt in my mind. But again, congratulations to Tom Brady. This is about Brady. It's good now because we have a week to celebrate Tom Brady. Then we go into the Super Bowl week. You have media week coming up. And then, of course, we go into the Super Bowl. And by that time, it'll be a little bit of yesterday's news and we can really focus the days leading up to the Super Bowl on Joe Burrow, the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 6-25-1 the last two years before this season going to the Super Bowl, which is incredible. That 18-point comeback in Kansas City, so much respect for what the Bengals have been able to do. And Joe Burrow, just an incredible, from his last year, his senior year at LSU, to what he's done this year, torn ACL in the middle, absolutely incredible. And then Matthew Stafford, zero playoff wins in 12 seasons with the Detroit Lions, Going to L.A. first year heading to a Super Bowl, which is really crazy, right? It shows you, from the Bengals' point of view, it shows you what an elite quarterback could do to a franchise. They go 6-25-1 over the last two years coming into this year. Now they're going to a Super Bowl because they have a quarterback. And then you had a good quarterback in Detroit for 12 years. They put nothing around him, and it shows that balance. Now he goes to a good team. He was a good enough quarterback if Detroit could have put anything besides Calvin Johnson around him. So... In one instance, you see how a quarterback can lift a franchise. In the other instance, you could see how the quarterback still needs help. But both guys are good quarterbacks, and both guys are leading their teams now to the Super Bowl. So it should be a good one. Again, congratulations to Tom Brady, one of the greatest I've ever seen. A seven-time Super Bowl champion has given me a lot of heartbreak 
being a Colt fan, but also a lot of great waking up on Sunday morning, pumped up for a primetime game, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, AFC Championships, Divisional Round, just so many matchups, so many great games, watching him, mainly rooting against him, but always respecting the greatness of Tom Brady. Guys, I appreciate you listening to Episode 3 of the Luke Diamond Show. I am your host, Luke Diamond. Keep it locked here for more. If you're a Colt fan, subscribe for the For the Culture Podcast. If you just want to hear my sports takes, subscribe and like this for the Luke Diamond Show. I'll be back with the next topic and Episode 4 right here on the Luke Diamond Show.